Yes, I know it won't be deleted. All right, so let's take a look at our memories. So you see that I have a lot more of the memories <laughs> unlocked here. Um, let's see, do I wanna, okay, so I do have one additional one. Oh, that's right, I didn't really talk about the secondary roads, but that's kind of complicated. It sort of doesn't make for great fun. Chests are offered during upgrades are large. Actually, this is this one's good, the big chest one. I think I'm curious to know what are the different, like now that you've kind of unlocked all the memories, like yeah. what are... Okay, so we saw that one. So, so this is the really powerful one that I was talking about earlier, where every, every time you start a floor, you regain half of your maximum will. And it's especially powerful when you get any of the upgrades that increase your maximum will, because every time you increase your maximum will, then you also increase that healing you get. Um, the chance one is also a really good one to have. For every floor, you get... And these, and these accumulate over time, too. You can redraw but you don't have to use it on that particular floor. So like if you do seven floors without redrawing, then you just accumulate seven redraws that you could use all at once if you wanted to. I see, that's cool. Um, being able to find thunder cards in chess is pretty powerful. Um, you can choose either of these. Like, in, So when the, the Amphorae, when you break them, they just break normally, but you can make it so that they either have a crystal or a star inside. Finding steel cards in chess is not great. Um, this is essentially like, you know, like a Phoenix Down type thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this one, this is, I, I haven't found a use for this one, so you sort of trade having as many, like, sword cards in your deck, but then you find more chests right away. I guess it's like if you don't want sword cards and you want more, um, you want to be able to choose. This one is a powerful ability, the ability to, to call the giant. Um, it's a uh, it's a weird one. And also, th this one also has an interesting sort of like allegorical property to it because there's this idea that like, as you develop through the game, because it takes a while to unlock this one. So it's like, as you're building towards like, improving your relationship with your father, you now, like, unlock a, an ability for the giant to come help you. So there's this idea that, like, you know, as you're sort of learning to deal with and help your father, your father will also learn to, like, deal with and help you as well. I think that's an interesting sort of, like, metaphorical property to, you know, give the mechanic. Um, no, I, I, I like it as well. Yeah, I mean, like, they're kind of... It's kind of interesting because it feels sometimes that different than the boons or the unlocks you get right yeah. in Hades but I think it's because it's more personal here yeah I think I'm actually I will trade something for that one this is not a big deal we can get rid of that so I'll take that one instead so we can see it all right and there actually are so, so I have these unlocked on my classic one I don't have them unlocked on the one I play with Nika but there are additional um like versions of like the gameplay map as well All right, we can skip this. We've seen this before. All right, so you see my little imaginary friend on the left here? So his ability is that he he gives us that hourglass effect that you can also get through using your memory abilities. So you'll notice a couple of things with um, easy. First of all, you start off with a lot more health. You start off with double the health. You also start off with double the cards. So I'm going to blow through this a little bit faster because, well, it's just genuinely easy. Although, yeah, we'll just watch you. Although this is not a great draw. Because <laughs> i got to get this guy dead and I don't have anything to kill him. So I need to get to that chest. And also, like when you when you pick um, packs of cards, there will be more cards in the pack on the easier level as well. Uh, let's grab X's. Old-fashioned A. Okay. 
was supposed to get. Okay, I did get one. All right. All right. So we'll kill this guy to get an extra turn. And we'll kill this guy just so we don't take much damage. And we'll kill this guy in the back. And then we'll proceed. So when you're playing on easy mode, it's not as big a deal to. You don't. You don't have to be as frugal with your cards. You'll have plenty of cards. <sighs> let's, see, let's take a sword pack and let's take an axe pack. Let's get that out of the way. Let's go ahead and jump. Oh, so we haven't had bombs before. I'll show you what bombs do. So bombs have a cross shaped AoE effect. That's right, that's a giant storm. So we'll get that in a sec. And then this is a nice situation where, because the Minotaur hits for a lot, so the fact that he had to stay back there behind the skeleton is nice. Alright. Let's level up. So, you can see already, like, just how much easier <laughs> the, the, the easy version of the game is, like, you don't even really have to think about it. I, I think that's probably like the intent, though, right? Behind this easy mode. Yeah. Like, or at least we have to think about it. I mean, someone like me probably would, but yeah, they're also giving you like better upgrades as well. So you feel like, you probably feel like you have more choice in easy mode. Yeah. Well, and I also think it's important to have. It took me a while to figure this out, but I realized that part of the reason why there probably is that huge, like, skill differential between those two is that like so you know I'm even doing this myself like I'm playing this version with Nika like I think she would have a rough time with like the classic difficulty but having um, the easy difficulty although maybe not I mean she definitely she would have had a harder time when she was younger but she's she's a bit of a gamer <laughs> now so I don't know it's hard to tell So now that we've collected that, um, when, like, if we die at the beginning of a level, we'll be, he'll come and help Am us. Am I in one of my dreams? The labyrinthine maze of the my imagination. The other thing that's important, it's, it's kind of subtle. You will only see it in one of the cutscenes. Uh, sorry, actually, it's in one of the memories. It becomes clear that, like, all of the... Well, one, that she's obsessed with video games. Two, that is Iris. My daughter is also obsessed with video games, but Iris is in the game. That's what I was trying to talk about. But then also, like, she has been, like, drawing all of these characters. And something that you find out very, very, very late in the run is that she has actually been creating these cards herself. Like, she draws these cards and carries them with her. Almost as if she's trying to, like will what is happening in her like dreamscape into being like she's trying to like literally create and manifest the game like in her real life yeah that makes sense i'm not surprised honestly like i feel like a lot of like this comes up a lot in, in just like discussing about like student projects or personal projects right that people do versus like the projects you see like, your companies do is honestly just that you have a personal project or a smaller project it ends up just being more like tight more personal yeah. like the thing game are relative to things that are actually real in the story or things that are done by the characters and i think that there's something to be said for continuing that because i feel like sometimes in games we just tend to hand wave a lot of things yeah um and i don't know i'm not a big fan of hand waving personally no. yeah. uh because i feel that like everything not because, like, I don't hand wave. Like, I have definitely hand waved in my <laughs> career. But what it is is, like, I think that everything can have a reason. The reason might not be great, right? Yeah. Um, and I don't think that maybe we should, like, explain everything into excruciating detail with 60 minutes of cutscenes. Final Fantasy 14. 
Hey, but you, you uh, neither you nor I get to knock Final Fantasy XIV with as much as we have played that game. Just finished a Realm Reborn for real, like 2.5. Um, if you don't play Final Fantasy XIV, you have no idea what that means. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, so I just started having swords, so I'm super excited. Um, but that being said, like, I... As much as is explained in that game of the weirdness, like, because they have explained so much, they don't have to explain the fact that the person that I'm fighting, like, the evil boss with is just a guy in glasses and a dad sweater. Yeah. Like, that fits perfectly into this world. Like, flying car? Sure. <laughs> dad sweater? Fine. Magical frying pan of amazing? <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I'll take it, right? Exactly, yeah. And I think it's because they've explained everything. Like, if this game ever came out with, like, a sequel, or, like, there was, like, a, say, a Life is Strange version of it or something. Yeah. Like, you would buy it because you're like, oh, yeah, like, of course these cards would now work in the real world. Because, like, she already had them in the real world. So just bringing them to the dream world, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, like, this is why I like playing indie games. Like, you can learn a lot from, from other people, I guess, from more types of things. Well, yeah, and the thing is, like, this... <laughs> Uh, there are actually things that really frustrate me about this game, but like playing a game like this, you, you feel like you're engaging with like a particular person's personality. Like there is a there is a single singular like human touch to this. And I mean, I'm not trying to bag on AAA games because you know I like them. I mean, they're they're fine, but they can feel really sterile. You understand what, what I mean by that? As someone who makes, <laughs> who, who makes I, those. I, I do understand, but I think maybe you should, like go out into a little more detail just so that we have. So that. the so the so the sterility it comes from like sterile ster, sterile is not the the word I was looking for. Clean. They feel too clean. Um, I like games that are a little like you know it's like a cheese. Sometimes you know a really nice like just cheddar is fine. But there is something about a cheese that kind of smells off, maybe a little bit like feet. Has like, you know, veins of mold growing all throughout it and Oh my gosh, I was not expecting a cheese metaphor. <laughs> so but it's but it's it's that sort of thing where it's like the the things that might to like, you know, just objectively sound like rot or decay or just kind of bleh are in fact the things that like really give it like a personality and something that is like distinct and memorable and so like in, in this game i was really annoyed with how difficult the like the classic difficulty was and how long and how like hard i had to work to figure it out but honestly i think there should be games like that like there should be those kinds of games that are sort of annoying and frustrating and but if you sort of persevere through the annoyance and the frustration you discover something that a game where like uh what was i playing recently what was it, what's a good example of this oh and i was playing portal 2 again recently where like that game just seamlessly teaches you how to play it that game is so clean and i sterile was the wrong word but like it just seamlessly like it doesn't even have to tell you how to get from one thing. Like the game itself, the, the way you interact with it teaches you how to play it. And it's really, really very beautifully done. But that doesn't have a personality to me. That doesn't feel like anyone thought of that. That feels really well that's, produced. Yep. Yeah, and I think that that's what you mean by sterility. Is that like, when you go into like a hospital, it's not supposed to have a personality. You're supposed to get in and feel better. Yeah, exactly. like, like you've gone in. And it's a very sterile environment. Every hospital looks the same. Every room looks the same because it needs to look the same. Because in a way, the doctor can't be worried about the room. They need to be looking at the patient, right? Yeah. So to them, you are what is different. But to you, every hospital is the same. And so every <laughs> doctor feels the same because they're in the same environment. Yeah. Likewise, right? You're saying that these like, mechanics and the, the, the feeling of the game feels sterile no matter how, even if it is elegantly done, because like at the end of the day you feel like you're <laughs> elderly before. Exactly. Because, you know, when, 
And, and a hospital is actually a really good way of thinking of it because a hospital is an entire system. It's not just like a doctor that you go to to get treated. Like there, there are all sorts of ancillary functions that have to work together. Like you have, you know, your general practitioner, but then also you may need to have blood tests done. And then you, there's also generally, you know, there's pharmacists. Like there are all sorts of things that have to work really seamlessly together in order for healthcare to operate effectively. And you wouldn't want it to be anything but that. And so, like, you know, for a game like, say, you know, a game that we just mentioned, Final Fantasy XIV, like, that game cannot be, like, a funky, indie-developed kind of game. Because there are just so many complex systems that have to work seamlessly with each other, or people won't play it. No, absolutely. And that's kind of the main difference, I think, between, like, the Final Fantasy and the big games, right? In a, or one of the big differences, right, between one of the big games and, like, the smaller games is that, like, the small games can kind of be a little bit frustrating to kind of experiment because they only have a set number of audiences versus, like, a larger title has so many different systems and complexity that you can't afford, almost, right, to isolate any one of them. And that's also what makes AAA development is that you want to be new and expand and have something that might be a little bit frustrating or off-putting without, right, alienating someone so much, right, and that it creates that disparity, so. Well, yeah, and you also, you also, yeah, and you have to justify your production costs because, you know, if you're making an Assassin's Creed or if you're making really any sort of, like, huge, really, like, texture-rich, like, open-world game, those just cost a lot of money to make. And so you have dumped, you know, millions and millions of dollars, tens of millions, and in some cases now hundreds of millions of dollars into a game, you have to get that back. And you can't really risk alienating people too much, or you really aren't going to get that back. You aren't, yeah. Like, we're just too buggy, or not enough like, time, or anything. Yeah. So, I think for the rest of this, I'm going to just keep watching you play. Yeah, no, that's fine. So yeah, we don't have like a ton of time left, and I, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll jam with everybody. Or, well, it's it's mostly you watching. <laughs> but let's see. Oh yeah, but if you have, uh, so the way streams work though is if you have Amazon Prime, this account does what it does is it'll stay for 14 days, or you can upload clips. So yeah. we'll upload clips of this afterwards. To yeah, and, our- and then I'll do yeah, and I'll also do a, um, I'll do a highlights version of it. Oh, that's the thing I was supposed to talk about. I was supposed to talk about how much I hate video editing, but no, I don't have to do that. Yeah. Until next time. <laughs> anyway, yeah, no, do you do you. I'm just going to talk through, like, the way I normally do when I play. Just talk to myself. Danger. Sad boys. Ooh. 
Sticks. Okay. Can't believe you have cruddle sticks. <laughs> What's wrong with cruddle sticks? Not what? Crud, just cruddle sticks. What's wrong with cruddle sticks? Nothing is wrong with cruddle sticks. I usually say something weird to you, I just forgot. Well, I I don't know if I, t I talked to you about this, but <clears throat> I've pretty much lost most of my um, like potty mouth all my. Like, all my swear words are gone because Nika has gotten it into her that I'm not allowed to swear anymore. Like, if she's not allowed to swear, I'm not allowed to swear. And so... No, she's right. She's yeah. right. That's how it was at my house. I was like, you can't... My, my dad actually took that up on himself. He was like, look, you can't swear. I can't swear. No one's swearing. And then we didn't swear until, like, I went to university. And then suddenly, like... It didn't apply to my sister, so <laughs> like, literally, she got my like. I left, and she's like, "Dad started swearing as soon as he left," and I was like, "Wow, okay, wow." No, so no, no. The, the response to that, that, that <laughs> so my sister was so confused. She's like, I "Thought this was like a family rule. But I guess it was like a pact you made, and now that you're like 18, Dad can start swearing because you're an adult." Yep, that's a good card, actually. So, okay, these are always interesting situations where, like, you have nothing but rocks to get through. And I also can't see, like, I can't see the stairs in shadow, like, in silhouette anywhere. So I just have to, like, chunk through rocks. That sucks. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to just chunk through rocks. Oh, because it was those guys. I hate the guys who can hide as rocks. All right, well, let's steal some of them. It's not a big deal. I'm gonna take a zap you so that way I can kill them right away when they appear again. Zapped. Oh, there's more of them. Jesus. I just gotta wait. There we go. That was an annoying level. Alright, okay. Fire time. Hmm. I can't remember if this counts as a magic effect. Well, we'll see. Let's go with bombs and dashers. Oh, we will surely see if this counts as... It is not a magic effect. Nice. Now, these all suck, except for this one. That one's okay. Oh. Yeah, 
Hey, screw you guys. <laughs> I don't want to stay here. I hear the rain in the distance. Or is that the sound of tears falling? An old sorrow that weighs heavy upon my heart. I also like the voice acting in this game. It's a little it's a little maudlin, but I'm a big fan of Melody. Yeah, I honestly I wish that I could hear it, and I don't know if it's something that I have in my audio settings or So here Oh, you know what? I know exactly what it is, and I apologize. Okay, because like I have now like I have now turned totally the volume fine. way up. <laughs> no, nope, you are totally fine. Okay, well then I'm actually gonna put the, the You should put the volume down. You yeah. should totally put the volume down. I gotta put one more level up. There we go. Okay. Yeah, you are We will do this the next time when I am not here. Because what happens is I can hear you and the game, so I had it muted. <laughs> Well, that's fantastic. Anyway, okay, so... Well, I mean, again, Growing Pains. Growing Pains. Growing Pains, we've yeah. got like two minutes left, so this is totally a great place to wrap up. Where I'm like, wait a second. I agree that your audio is great. I'll watch the video afterwards. Well, we got about ten more minutes. So, I mean, Lauren... Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah two more minutes. I, I wasn't looking at that clock. I was looking at the other clock. Oh, okay. I mean, the, the thing is... Well, yeah, because I had started just, like, playing music in the background about ten minutes early, because so, I like to, you know, check things beforehand to make sure everything's functional. Um, let's go with zappers and bomb bombs. Oh, actually, I would have known that it's not a magic card, because magic cards all have the blue border, and non-magic cards have the little, like, gray teeth border. So... That was me being a dumb dumb. Right, I don't want sads. Sads blow. But we're gonna leave drop. Good. That's not really a problem. Oh, the bullwhip guy. Well. Okay, so that's not protecting me. Oh, gee. Well, okay. It was protecting me. <laughs> Dang it. if you steal from these guys they just give you a whip and I don't like whips 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 do not whip as it turns out It also took me forever to figure out that shields work differently from armor. The mistake I kept making. Actually, I definitely want to steal this. The side is good to steal. I definitely want to. 
actually replacing that. But... Let's get rid of these guys. Daggers, daggers, and axes. No, I'm not going to get through a run by the end of the stream. That's sad. But that just means everybody needs to go out and buy this game. And everybody, by everybody, I mean you and me, Lauren. <laughs> Technically, I've already bought this game. 